Vince McMahon's name's banned from WWE television. Triple H introduces a new WWE championship. John Cena's honest take on Logan Paul's WWE career. Roman Reigns' family forced him to quit WWE. Paul Heyman on why WWE fans rejected Roman Reigns as a babyface. Paul Heyman on The Rock betraying the bloodline and more. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Let's dive right in. Triple H introduces a new WWE Championship. WWE has made a major announcement. The Stanford-based company earlier announced that a new show, Speed, would air exclusively on X slash Twitter. In a new video, further information about the program is presented. The show's debut date is April 3, 2024, and each match will last only three minutes. The fact that there will be a WWE Speed Championship is maybe the most remarkable. The winner of the following competition will receive the prize. While this is obviously thrilling, Triple H and other company leaders should consider introducing a WWE Speed Women's Championship in the future. This is required for a variety of reasons, which will be discussed in this video. For being the most obvious purpose is to promote diversity and inclusion. It would be unusual for the Stanford-based organization to host a weekly show featuring entirely male talent in 2024. It would be unusual for Triple H to introduce another title for males while leaving one out. Aside from that, leaving female performers out would certainly reflect poorly on the Stanford-based promotion. Following incidents such as charges against Vince McMahon and Ronda Rousey's disparaging remarks about the Stanford-based corporation, the game must ensure that brilliant women are treated as equals now more than ever. Several underutilized female WWE superstars would benefit from it. Beyond the optics and inclusion, another significant reason why the Stanford-based firm should develop a Speed Women's Championship is that the title would benefit a large number of performers. Tika Knox, for example, has yet to win a title in WWE. Winning gold at a smaller show could be the boost she needs right now. Candice LeRae, Zaya Lee, Indy Hartwell, Caden Carter, Katana Chance, and Nikki Cross are all Raw performers that may benefit from the belt. However, this extends beyond Raw superstars. SmackDown's Isla Dawn and Alba Fire are both underutilized. Selena Vega and Mia Yim could also give excellent performances. Aside from that, NXT stars like Gigi Dolan and Kiana James could use the show and a title win to advance to the main roster. Many superstars could benefit from a secondary title. John Cena's honest take on Logan Paul's WWE career. The WWE Universe hopes to see a match between John Cena and Logan Paul in the future. The greatest of all time recently shared his honest thoughts on the current United States champion. John Cena has had one of the most successful wrestling careers of all time. He is regarded as one of the best sports performers and his work both inside and outside the ring has increased viewership for WWE. Logan Paul is attempting to achieve something similar as a top heel in a firm. The superstar's start and performance in the ring have won a lot of respect in recent months. Graham Bensinger has published a new documentary about five months with Logan Paul. In one episode, John Cena expresses his honest assessment of the United States champion. The greatest of all time stated that it would have been preferable if the corporation had discovered him sooner, as he is an excellent fit for the organization. I wish we found him years ago. I believe this is his calling. I'm delighted he discovered us. He fits in perfectly with what we do, Cena said in the documentary in depth with Graham Bensinger. It's no secret that John Cena's return always attracts more viewers to WWE. He could return for a few more matches and eventually face the Maverick in a one-on-one -on -one match. Meanwhile, Paul has established his worth in the ring with multiple strong performances. He's had a great match with Roman Reigns and also fought Ricochet in an electrifying match to prove himself. Roman Reigns' family forced him to quit WWE. Roman Reigns has had his fair share of ups and downs in WWE, but he is presently sitting atop the Stanford-based business. However, if he had followed his family's advice after WrestleMania 31, he would not have achieved his current success. Before we get into what Afa and Sika of the Anoa'i family had to say about the outcomes of WrestleMania 31, let's go over what happened at the premium live event. Roman Reigns battled against Brock Lesnar, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion at the moment. Both men used their finest moves such as the Spear, F5, German Suplex, and Superman Punch to bring the other down, but they failed repeatedly. In an unexpected change of events, Seth Rollins cashed out his money in the bank contract. Rollins delivered a curb stump on Reigns and pinned him to become the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. The outcome of the main event battle allegedly enraged Roman Reigns' father, Sika Adenolai, who was reportedly angry with the Stanford-based corporation. Reigns' uncle, Afa Adenolai, was also dissatisfied with the results. 
Apparently, several of Reigns' family members wanted him to leave WWE after WrestleMania 31. However, Roman Reigns was considered to have handled the setback admirably. Michael P.S. Hayes denied the accusations, alleging that Sicko was blown away at WrestleMania 31. If the rumors are accurate and Sicko Adenali wanted his son to quit the Stanford-based firm, the WWE Universe should be relieved that Reigns did not make that decision. The bloodline narrative, which began with the tribal chief, has brought The Rock back into WWE. While the narrative began began without the Brahma Bull. His arrival in the Samoan side and nasty persona have undoubtedly piqued wrestling fans' interest. Paul Heyman on why WWE fans rejected Roman Reigns as a babyface. WWE icon Paul Heyman recently discussed why fans rejected Roman Reigns' ascent as a babyface while accepting Cody Rhodes as a top favorite talent. WWE worked for a long time to position Reigns as a babyface in the Stanford-based organization. Fans consistently rejected the idea. The firm then chose to make Roman into a heel figure which helped the tribal chief become extremely popular. Meanwhile, Rhodes is one of the greatest baby faces in the Stanford promotion. The two are presently in a heated feud and will compete for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at WrestleMania XL. During a recent Forbes interview, Paul Heyman discussed why he believes Roman Reigns was rejected as a babyface, but fans loved Cody Rhodes in the same capacity. According to the Wiseman, Rhodes developed relationships with fans because it is what he had always wanted to do, but Reigns was never that way. Roman's emergence as the protagonist in WWE folklore was the corporate portrayal of how Roman Reigns and Joe Noi it were perceived behind the scenes as Roman Reigns. Cody delivers exactly what he promises. This is Cody. Cody enjoys staying in the arena after the event, shaking every fan's hand, posing with them, and signing their autographs. That's just not Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman stated. The Wiseman also stated that he believes the tribal chief's approach to the wrestling business differs significantly from the American nightmares. He is a game day player. He's there to perform his job better than anyone else and then leave and go home. His job is to provide for his family and he does it by becoming the best at what he does on the earth right now, if not ever. He is not the baby kissing autograph signer. It's just not him, Paul Heyman explained. It remains to be seen whether the American Nightmare defeats the tribal chief and ultimately concludes the drama at the show shows. Paul Heyman on The Rock Betraying the Bloodline Paul Heyman is a well-known veteran of the professional wrestling industry and a key member of the Bloodline. During a recent interview with Forbes' Alfred Kaniwa, Heyman discussed a variety of topics, including his thoughts on The Rock's hints about potentially abandoning the Simone faction. The Brahma Bull hinted on multiple occasions that he may flip on Roman Reigns and the Bloodline. The most major hint was the final boss making an L motion while performing the heel faction's iconic We The Ones pose. During a recent interview with a pro wrestling journalist, the Wiseman offered some insight on the situation. Heyman stated that this could be more than a conspiracy theory. The Wiseman feels The Rock may be cooking something, and it would be unwise to ignore it. Heyman also recalled what his father had taught him and insisted that there must be substance to it. However, the 58-year-old veteran proposed that Alfred Kanua ask the people's champion the question. The Wiseman believes The Rock would be delighted to shed light on this. I'm not sure, and my suggestion would be ask The Rock that question, which I'm sure he'd be pleased to answer. But there is a conspiracy, and just because because it's a conspiracy idea does not imply there isn't one behind it. So my father always told me, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean the whole world isn't against you. So I'm sure there's something to that. And my idea is to ask the final boss to rock Paul Heyman remark. The events that take place at WrestleMania XL involving the bloodline will be exciting. Why Sami Zayn must not defeat Guther at WWE WrestleMania. A WWE veteran argues that Sami Zayn should not win his next match against Guther at WrestleMania XL. While Sami has been a lovable underdog in the past, Vince Russo believes his popularity has declined drastically. In comparison, WWE Intercontinental Champion Guther has maintained his star power thanks to some outstanding in-ring skills and booking. As a result, Sami's plans to defeat the ring general in the near future make little sense. Speaking on sports, he does writing with Russo, the former WWE writer stated that the bout should have been three-way, with Chad Gable included. He also stated that if it were up to him, he would have scheduled Gable to flip on Sami Zayn. First and foremost, I believe it should be a three-way. I believe they should have booked it. They might have imaginatively devised a way to make it a three-way. It doesn't appear that will be the case. Instead, Gable will coach you Sami because he knows Gunther better than anyone else. I would turn Gable on Sami. Sami Zayn cannot beat Gunther for the crown. I'm sad for all the time and work they've put into Gunther, his streak, and how good he is, and Sami Zayn cannot beat him. 
Tiffany Stratton's real-life heat with former WWE star. Tiffany Stratton, a WWE superstar, has been on the verge of success in recent months as her popularity in the Stanford-based business has skyrocketed. Meanwhile, the 24-year-old has recently received criticism from former WWE superstar Dana Brooke, also known as Ash by Elegance, who is now affiliated with TNA Wrestling. As a result, many fans speculated that Stratton and Ash might be in a relationship. That does not appear to be the case, since Ash broke her quiet on her official X slash Twitter account, explaining that the rounds she fired at Tiffany were character and gimmick work, and there are no real-life difficulties between them. When she launched shots at Tiffany Stratton, the former WWE superstar, he was fans of being harsh for criticizing her character work. You all are ruthless. It's called character, but clearly everything is taken extremely seriously. If you know Ash by elegance, you'll know she's self-centered. If you know me, you'll know I give huge kudos to Tiff for all of her labor and accomplishments. Sorry, I have to explain this. Elegance shared Ash. Despite this statement, people pointed out the differences between the two stars, claiming that they are currently working for different campaigns. It will be interesting to see if the buff Barbie responds to the ongoing scandal on social media. And lastly, Vince McMahon's name's banned from WWE television. After this week's CM Punk segment on Raw, Vince McMahon's name apparently received a ban from WWE television. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins had a heated argument on WWE Raw, paving the way for CM Punk's appearance as a guest commentator for the World Heavyweight Championship event at WrestleMania. During the segment, CM Punk ignited outrage by making a reference to Vince McMahon and challenging Drew McIntyre about who appointed him as the Choose One. Dave Meltzer discussed the segment on Wrestling Observer Radio, highlighting worries among some that allowing the three guys to talk unscripted, particularly when McMahon's name was used, would not have been prudent due to an apparent prohibition on discussing McMahon's name on WWE television. Meltzer stated it wasn't scripted word for word, as most things on that show are. They gave the boys complete freedom. There was one point when many people thought this wasn't a good idea. It was a reference to Vince McMahon. He went on to say, One of the problems is that Vince McMahon's name is not permitted to be uttered on television, but McIntyre changed the subject and never said the name and they got out of it. They went a little long, but there was no criticism. Meltzer also provided insider insights, staying, One individual informed me that Levesque knew they were definitely going to go long. Therefore, the matchups that didn't have entrances were previously scheduled before the show so they didn't do it to save time. The dynamics of permitting unscripted dialogue, particularly when it touches on sensitive themes such as Vince McMahon, highlight the specifics of WWE's programming and the difficulties in balancing creative freedom with obedience to rules. What are your thoughts on this strategy? Should WWE continue to experiment with unscripted moments or is a more controlled setting preferable? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below.